Hello everyone, Dr. Zia Tahir here. This video tutorial is about linear buckling analysis of composite cylindrical shell subjected to axial compressive load in a Bacchus CAE. The composite cylindrical shells fabricated from carbon fiber reinforced plastic laminates have internal diameter of 700 mm and overall length of 520 mm. The nominal thickness of shell wall is equal to 1.32 mm and thickness of each ply is 0.33 mm. So it is a four ply laminate. The shell have different layup orientation. Model, model one having layup orientation asymmetrical like 40 plus 45 minus 45. And model 2 have layup orientation 0, 45, minus 45, and 0. The mechanical properties of CFRP are as below. Elastic modulus E11, that is 52,000 megapascal. Elastic modulus E22 is 52,000 megapascal. The shear modulus is 2350 megapascal, and Poisson's ratio is 0.302. So determine buckling load under axial compression using linear analysis. So the data for uh, the, these two shells is taken from this paper, effect of asymmetric meshing on the thing behavior composite shell under axial compress, compression. And that is the details of that, at, like length is 20 and diameter is 700 and layer orientation. That is 4 ply symmetrical plus 45 minus 45. And that I'm going to uh, designate as model 1. And the orientation 0, 45 minus 45, 0. That is being model uh, designated as model 2. And here are the magnetic properties of CFR ply. So magnetic properties are here. And uh, for these two models, Analytical buckling load, like uh, for model 1, is 118.58 kilonewton and model 2, 240 kilonewton. So both have different layup orientation, and due to that layup orientation, they have different critical buckling load. So, steps for analysis of cylindrical shell. So there are three main part modeling, analysis, and results. And in the modeling, need to set units and set work directory, then create part, create partition. So all these are steps which I'll follow for this analysis. And I explain all these steps one by one. The first step is you need to see that which units you are going to use. So you can use a set one newton meter pascal or newton millimeter mega pascal. So in this case, like the thickness and dimensions, they are in millimeters and mechanical properties are in mega pascal. So I'm going to use that set three of units and then need to set work directory. So for to set work directory here, file set work directory. So I have set that work directory where I want to uh, save that CAE file and ODB file and then I have saved the, uh, this one as linear uh, that as shell linear analysis. Next step is to create part and the part is 3D deformable shell extrusion. So here is a backus. So this is a model tree. So either model tree can be used uh, to create part or here Either module can be used. So just click on here, create part, or double click on parts. So just double click on that. So it is 3D deformable shell and extrusion. And then approximate size in millimeter. So that is almost double of the maximum dimension. So diameter is about 700. So I am going to set that approximate size as 1000 millimeter. So continue. So first I'll draw its cross section and then I'll apply extrusion and that is a circle. 
So starting from here, that is the center. And then I'll just go for a random circle. And then here I'll add dimensions. It says 252, but the radius is 350 millimeter. And that you have that cross section or a circle with radius 350. And that is done. And then depth. So depth type is blind, so it can go in any direction. And the depth is 520 millimeter. Okay, so now that is the shell with radius 350 and overall length as 520. So that is being modeled. Next step is on the part need to create partition face. And why is that required to assign element size in the longitudinal direction? So for that one here on the part. So on the part here are options to for the partition. So I can go tool and partition and select face and use the shortest path between two points. So that is the first part I'm going to select. And that is the second part to create partition. Okay, so now here on the part in the feature, you can see that there is a partition face. Next step is create material and material is mechan mechanical, elastic and type is lamina. And E11, E22, G12 and all other properties need to add it there because uh, the part, the units, for dimension i have used as millimeter and then for these modulus of elasticity and shear modulus i'll use megapascal units so now you can use that property module to create material or just click directly on the material and that material is cfrp mechanical then elastic Elasticity, elastic, and then here type is lamina. So type is lamina, and then need to add the properties. So that is 52,000 E11, E22 is 52,000, Poisson's ratio is 0.32, G12 is 2350, and the other values are the same as 2350. I'm going to use. Okay, so now the material is created, which is CFRP, and that is elastic material, lamina, and then these are the mechanical properties. Next step is in the property module, create section, shell, composite, thickness, orientation, angle, and ply name. So I have two model here. One is a model one that has layup orientation like four ply symmetrical plus 45 and minus 45. So this is I'm going to model as model one. And later I'll use that layup orientation for model two. So first I'm going to use that. So it is 45 minus 45 symmetrical. It means that uh, the next two plies, they have the same orientation 45 and minus 45. So need thickness is required and thickness of each ply is 0.33 millimeter orientation angle plus 45 minus 45 then plus 45 and minus 45 so for that one here you have sections you can either click on this section create section and that is shell composite continue and now material is cfrp Thickness of each ply is 0.33. Orientation angle is plus 45. So you can name that ply name, but uh, it then otherwise it will automatically give that. And for the second ply is again CFRP, so 0.33. And then orientation angle for second ply is minus 45. So you can just click here, insert row after, and then insert row after because you have uh, here we have four plies. So for four plies, four rows need to be added here. So then 0.33 millimeter is the thickness of each ply and then plus 45 
and then it is minus 45. So now orientation angle for each ply and thickness they added so you can give them ply name ply one two three four so that's okay so now here that section is being created with four plies and one section is being created then by clicking here assign section or here is a section assignment click here and it says select the region to be assigned a section so select whole of that region so done and then that is a section one and shell offset definition is a middle surface so it takes like thickness from that middle surface okay so now that section is assigned to part next step is in mesh and for that i'm using that seed edge by number so here the diameter or the circumference is 2200 and its length is 520 so if i'm going to use that element size as 10 millimeter so then what i can do there are two options you can use that shell element size of 10 millimeter or here in the mesh module so that is seed edge so seed edge like click this one so done so by size or by number okay by size you can set here like 10 millimeter or if it's by number so i am going to use that 52 apply so now element size is 52 and then these two upper and lower edge done and the circumference is 2200 millimeter so i am going for like here 220 apply okay and then generate mesh yes so here in the mesh control so i am using core dominating and free and in this way so the element size is approximate the element size is approximate square because element size in axial direction and in circumferential direction both direction is same and then the next one is here assign element type and assign element type i'm using here as 4r that is a that is a four node doubly curved thin or thick shell with reduced integration or glass and finite membrane strain so i'm going to use that as 4r okay so now the mesh part is done the next one is in assembly create instance and for that one here in the assembly module you can go here or here is assembly so click on instance and then okay so now that is being assembled here so that instance is here now next step is step and need to create step and the step is linear perturbation buckle and i'm going to name that as buckle and then egan solver are either lens dose or subspace so the lens dose is quite quicker and subspace is uh, it takes more time compared to that lens dose so for that one here uh, in the step module this is you can create step or just by clicking the step you can create step and i am going to name it as buckle and procedure type is linear perturbation and here is a buckle so linear perturbation and buckle so continue and then here i am going to use that lens dose and for that one no further require, uh, required but if you are using subspace so then you need to maximum number of even value requested so you can request like one two three or uh, here i am using just three and then the maximum number of iteration so if you are using that subspace so like 30 iteration in the 30 iteration you are not able to solve it so you need to set like more than 300 or 500 iteration but i'm for quicker one i'm going for uh, 
lens rows and number of eigen value request i'm going to request 3 but you can request that one it will be much quicker so now that step is being created next step is load and create load and for that is shell edge load shell edge load is like uh, is a line load and its units are newton per millimeter so i am using here unit load to estimate that buckling load so that unit load is need to be divided by the circumference in millimeter so which is 2199.115 so that is a one way so you can apply shell edge load or otherwise there is another way like you can create a reference point and then apply load on that reference point so in this step i can create here this uh, sorry in the load module load module you can create here is a create load or here you can double click on that and then create load so that is a load one and step is buckle for that and that is a shell edge load continue and then select shell edge for the load so i am going to select this one so done and then this so the direction of shell edge load is always towards the edge like as pressure and its magnitude is 1 over the circumference which is 2199.115 so that is that unit load is being converted into newton per millimeter okay so now that is a shell edge load is being applied the next one in the load module need to create boundary condition so the boundary conditions are the fixed boundary conditions were used all three translational displacement and three rotational displacements were fixed at the bottom of shell while the only axial translation displacement was free at the top of the shell so for that one need to use displacement rotation boundary condition and here click on boundary uh, double click on boundary condition or click here here as boundary condition so that is the boundary condition and here step is initial and displacement and rotation continue and i'm going to select that lower edge continue and lower edge is fixed so all six displacements they are zero there and then here i can double click on bc so that is the boundary condition two so initial displacement rotation continue and on the top of that so all are zero except that u3 because load is being applied from the top so then there are two boundary condition you can see so these are the two boundary condition applied and then is here is one load being applied so now all steps are done for model one model two is same as model one but the only orientation layup orientation is different so i need to follow all these steps till here for that one uh, model 2 so what i am going to do here i am going to copy that model 1 as 2 okay and then in model 1 i'll go to section and in the section i'll just change layup orientation so that is zero then plus 45 minus 45 and then it is zero okay so now that model two is i just copied that model one as model two and only difference is in the section so layup orientation i change next step is to create job and then data check and submit so for that one because I have two models, so I'm going to create two jobs here. So click on jobs, and then in the job one, correspond to model one. So continue. So here you can see there is one job, and then double click again, job two, correspond to model two, and continue. Okay. And then I'll submit data check for both of those. Data check for first, and then data check for second. So data check is completed. So now I'm going to submit both of submit. Okay, so that job one is submitted. And start running, then I'll submit the other one. 
as well so that is running and both jobs are running so both job both jobs are completed so next step in the results is a visualization so right click here and go to results and in the results so output database that is the job one or otherwise you can go here open and that is a job two odb that is open okay so one is locked the other one is not locked so now the job one so that is undeformed shape so i click here to get its deformed shape and that is the buckling load in newton 1.20551 or 120.551 kilonewton so that is for model 1 so analytical buckling load for model 1 is 118.58 kilonewton so that is this load is little bit this one is a little bit higher than that analytical buckling load but it, it can be by changing element size so a mesh sensitivity study can be performed to check that when the solution is going to converge for that uh, model one now for, that is a model two and that is a model two buckling uh, buckle mode shape and its buckling load is 248.47 kilonewton 248.417 kilonewton and for this one it is 240.00 so that is the uh, analytical buckling load so that load is a little bit higher than this load but uh, that is a little bit closer to analytical buckling load and then that buckling load need to be adjusted by performing a mesh sensitivity study or mesh sensitivity analysis by because here i have randomly selected as element size as 10 millimeter so it can this uh, it can be decreased to let's say 5 millimeter and then check that how much is the buckling load corresponding to that uh, 5 millimeter element size so now that is a buckling uh, buckle shape and this buckle shape because is called as doubly periodic or sometimes it's called as diamond shape because it has like those buckles around axial direction and circumferential direction so here you can see that deformation scale factor is seven uh, is 70 that is 70 so by clicking here that deformation scale factor can be changed because it's 69.9 or 70 so we can set is uniform like to see that how much is actual so that is the actual one so it means that they, these are not the, uh, like like those deformed shape is not that much prominent in actual so that is that's a slight one but if i let's say if i do that 10 and apply so then you can see it is more prominent here and similarly for job one so it's deformation scale factor so if i click here and then i go auto complete the same one and then like if i say deformation scale factor as one so then that is that is its shape and it's barely can be seen but yes if you zoom that in so then you can see it is deformed Okay, so this is all about linear buckling analysis to get the results and those results by eigenvalue analysis. So they are like, they are, they are good agreement with analytical results and like the error is less than 5%. So now the summary of the results. So this video tutorial is about linear eigenvalue analysis of thin cylindrical composite shell subjected to axial compressive loads. So two layup orientation mod, uh, two shells with different layup layup orientation are analyzed in this video. 
model one that has a symmetrical uh, layup orientation plus 45 minus 45 plus 45 minus 45 and the other one model two is zero 45 minus 45 and zero these are the mechanical properties so first i created uh, i set units as newton millimeter megapascal and then all the results of buckling load comes as newton so i created a part 3d deformable shell and extrusion and then i uh, first draw that as a circle and then i extrude it along uh, for the length then a partition i have created the partition uh, along the face so i can assign element size of my own choice in longitudinal direction then i created a material and material is mechanical elastic and type is lamina so these are the mechanical properties which i have used e1 e2 to d12 and u12 then uh, a section is created and that section shall com composite is used and in that one thickness orientation angle and ply name if it is required so that is being used so this one is the only create section is the uh, is a part which is different for both of those models the next one shell and uh, mesh and i use that seed edge by number by assuming that element size of 10 millimeter and then uh, i use that uh, quadratic dominated element shape and then i assign element type as s4r then uh, creating assembly is quite straightforward then the step so step here is use linear perturbation and buckle uh, and the eagle solver here is length those so if it is not being uh, solution is not being converged with that then you can use subspace with higher number of iteration and then load is applied here shell as load so that load as uh, static load or point load can also be applied but for that one on the top you need to create a reference point then in the load boundary condition need to be created and boundary condition fixed boundary condition at both hands are used but for the top edge uh, u3 is set as zero so the load can be transmitted to shell and then a job is created for both of the model and in the results the visualization only parameter required is uh, buckling load so that is a straightforward in newton so that's all about this analysis i hope you like this video thank you very much for watching so you can leave comment for feedback so please subscribe my channel for other videos on finite element analysis and to learn abacus and ansys workbench